In prompt engineering, there is an important technique called in-context learning. To put it simply, when designing prompts, we include examples to stimulate the model's corresponding abilities. In-context learning has several characteristics. First, no training required. The model's parameters remain unchanged. Second, providing examples. This involves adding examples to the prompt to guide the model. To summarize in plain terms, in-context learning can be thought of as the model not realizing what it knows. The model inherently possesses certain capabilities, but it doesn't know that it does. Humans are similar. Sometimes we don't realize we have a skill until someone shares an example or experience. For instance, a friend might describe how someone achieved something, and we suddenly realize that we could do the same because it's within our skill set. Similarly, when examples are provided to the model, it realizes it can perform the task. The essence of in-context learning is using real examples to trigger a specific capability of the model. For example, if we want the model to perform sentiment analysis, we aim to classify a text, such as a user review, as positive or negative. When training a base model, we typically feed it a large amount of text for comprehension. However, we don't specify this particular task during training. The model, while understanding the text well, lacks explicit knowledge of this task. What do we do? We provide a few examples. A text with its corresponding label. For example, positive or negative. The model then understands how to handle the task. The structure of a prompt for in-context learning generally includes first, instruction, telling the model what to do. Second, requirements, specifying how the task should be performed. Third, examples, providing one or more examples to illustrate the task. Fourth question, the actual task or query for the model, referencing the examples to generate the answer. If no examples are provided, this is called zero-shot learning. If a few examples are given, it's known as few-shot learning. A few points to note about in-context learning. First, limit the number of examples. Too many examples can occupy the prompt's context window. Processing long prompts often leads to suboptimal results and increases inference costs. Smaller models might not even have the capacity to handle lengthy prompts. Second, Ensure example diversity. For instance, in a sentiment analysis task with outcomes of positive and negative, include both types of examples in the prompt. Avoid using examples that are all positive or all negative, as this could introduce bias, causing the model to lean toward one outcome over the other. Similarly, if the task involves intent recognition with 20 to 30 intents, Include examples covering all intents to maintain diversity. Third, use representative examples. Choose examples that effectively represent their category. This allows fewer examples to generalize to a broader range of similar cases. Finally, let's compare in-context learning with model fine-tuning. In in-context learning, examples are provided externally serving to trigger or activate the model's existing abilities. The knowledge remains external to the model. In fine-tuning, the knowledge is embedded within the model itself, modifying its parameters.